having high yield is awesome. But along with that, isn't it nice to have good test weight? How about just good overall quality, high protein? Well, today we want to talk about some of those grain quality factors in your crop. You know, when you talk to some of the highest yielding farmers around the world, one of the things they do focus on is grain quality. And I thought that was kind of an interesting discussion the first time I started having it, but then I hear it again and again and again. And I'm like, wait a second, I thought you were shooting for yield. And overwhelmingly, the message I got back was, well, we can't get those high yields without having exceptional grain quality too. And feeding that crop all the way through the season has been the key. And what we heard from many of these growers is the lesson we want to share with farmers that are struggling right now is don't give up on the crop so early. Now we hear it with soybeans a lot because yeah, soybeans can keep flowering late in the season. But you know, with corn, you may have all your kernels set on that ear, but you don't have the weight of those kernels set yet. You could still add some pounds. All right, now this is where Darren and I are gonna disagree a little bit because let's put it this way, if I have heavy soil, a cold climate, and let's say that I can't move my nutrients down in through that heavy soil very well because I don't have a lot of rainfall, then impacting that grain quality late in the season isn't as easy. Certainly you can do some foliar feeding if you would like to, but you can only get small amounts of nutrients in at any one time through that. So what we talk about a lot, if you want to let's say influence test weight. You want to have no dent in the kernels of corn, which by the way is absolutely possible, but the only way you're gonna do that is you've gotta fill it full of nutrients. And for years we've talked about NPK, and you've heard about NPK, you grew up talking about NPK. Well, NP and K are great, but how about sulfur? How about calcium and magnesium and boron, copper, zinc, manganese, iron? All these micronutrients, secondary and micronutrients, are tremendously important as well. So that's really the big focus. We've got to look at everything, the big picture, and we've got to properly feed that plant. All right, Brian throws out the heavy soil and, and low rainfall and all this. You know what? You just have to time things a little different. You have to be more aggressive a little bit earlier so you have more time to get rainfall and to move things into the plant. It's not easy being the guy with light soils either though. You may say, oh yeah, it is. You can just push nutrients right into the plant. That's true, but you've got to be after it. You can't have a few days where things go because they can go bad very quickly. So there's challenges on either end of that spectrum. There's no perfect soil. There's no one recipe to high yields. It's going to vary a little bit depending on where you're at. So it's something that you have to work on. One of the good tools that you can use that we talk about quite often is plant tissue analysis to see where are we at with certain nutrient levels. And you can track that over time and over different years to see, hey, am I pushing enough nutrients in compared to where I'm at at this stage in previous years. And then the other important thing is to know which nutrients do move in soil and which ones don't. So if you look at phosphorus, for example, that's not moving in your soil, even in a sandy soil. So you've got to really be early with the phosphorus. And like we talk about on our farm, when we do have heavy soil with little rainfall and we're cold, we have to have that phosphorus all out there way in advance. And banding makes more sense than broadcast because we just don't get all that movement in the soil like we do with nitrogen, with sulfur, and even with boron. You know, in corn, we talk about this, and it seems like farmers, for the most part, enjoy pushing their corn, at least on their best fields. In wheat, this is really the same message. We've got to push those nutritional levels late in the season, especially with things like nitrogen and sulfur and boron. But take a look at what your crop is short in. That's where you're going to get the most response. Okay, so let's be very specific here with late season protein adjustment in wheat. That's the crop that we usually see the most short on protein. Nitrogen is the absolute key. That's probably 90% of it. So you wanna make sure you have available nitrogen late in the season. You can do some foliar feeding. You can certainly do some stream barring, but get nitrogen out there late in the season. When we talk about corn and improving that test weight, one of the things I wanted to bring up because of this year and late planting, this is why I suggest guys switch to earlier hybrids. If you're planting a late hybrid, you don't reach full maturity, well, you're gonna have really low test weight stuff in the fall. So that's why I move down in terms of maturity way faster than most people do because I just wanna make sure we beat the frost all the time in the fall. Then in soybeans, probably the biggest thing I would say is 
you need a tremendous amount of potassium and potassium does move to some degree even in heavy soils if you get lots of rainfall but in light soils it can move at least a little bit so we want to make sure that we've got plenty of potassium out there and don't forget about the micronutrients late season foliar feeding absolutely can pay in soybeans because so much of the yield in soybeans is determined in august compared to a little bit earlier in the season in corn and much earlier in wheat you definitely don't want to give up on your crop too early you still can push yield by driving nutrients into those plants the other thing that you can do is stop these late season weeds from causing problems as well We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.